Thursday, September 26, 2019, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today I'm going to talk about a book that I've talked a lot about in the past, but with all uh, new subscribers, new viewers, I have to keep coming back to this book because I think it's one of the best books, one of the books that uh, has helped me uh, kind of uh, forecast what's going to happen to the monetary system, to the financial system going forward. Uh, and, and this is the book here, Fiat Money Inflation in France, how it came, what it brought, and how it ended by Andrew Dixon White. Uh, it was written in 1912. Of course, things don't uh, happen exactly the same as they did in the past, but they do rhyme, uh, as the old saying goes, right? So that's what I'm going to do today go over this book and uh, I read it many years ago probably over 15 years ago when I started looking into precious metals when I first uh, bought my uh, first uh, gold coins back in 2002 started looking into the Austrian School of Economics uh, uh, who you know that school of economics uh, of course espouse sound money and gold as money and silver and this is one of the books that uh, they uh, they recommend. And I'll go through it now, and then I'll go over uh, where the markets are this morning. First of all, uh, a little bit about uh, uh, the author. So, Andrew Dixon White, LLD, PhD, DCL, late president and professor of history at Cornell University. Sometime United States Minister to Russia and Ambassador to Germany, author of A History of the Warfare of Science and Technology. So uh, it's not a very long book. It's under 70 pages. You can find free PDFs or you can buy the book as well if you like having books. So first of all, just go through uh, the summary of the book here and then I'm going to go into a section of the book that I think is very appropriate for nowadays uh, in what's happening uh, in central banking, uh, the monetary system, uh, the negative interest rates, uh, market manipulation, stock market prices manipulation, uh, bond price manipulation, everything. So it says, in 1790, the French people, by general acquiescence, embarked upon what they believed to be a harmless experiment in currency inflation. The results of this action are vividly described in Dr. Andrew uh, D. White's book entitled Fiat Money Inflation in France, how it came, what it brought, and how it ended. It goes on to say the story of fiat money inflation in France is one of great interest to legislators, to economic students, and to all business and thinking men and women, I would say as well. It records the most gigantic attempt ever made in, his, in the history of the world by a government to create an inconvertible paper currency and to maintain its circulation at various levels of value. So I'll stop there. Uh, so uh, I think now that's the second most uh, gigantic experiment, right? And this was right after the French Revolution. Uh, the French state was in ruins. They needed uh, to pick, get business uh, to keep going, right? Capital had withdrawn from the system. So they tried inconvertible paper money. While it was backed by uh, <laughs> uh, church land, but uh, that didn't work uh, very well, of course. And nowadays, we've, we've had since 1971, the same experiment, but it's on a worldwide basis. So it's taken a lot longer uh, to, uh, to see its demise, <laughs> almost uh, 50 years now. Back then, it took about five years for this to implode. Uh, it was only in France, of course. But uh, I want to go to a section where it talks about um, how the issues of, uh, how can I say this, uh, the assignats or this irredeemable money cannot stop and that it has to keep increasing um, because it doesn't really uh, create 
the uh, conditions for natural prosperity of an economy. And it's, a, it's the same thing uh, with what's going on today with all the uh, QE, uh, negative interest rates, zero interest rates. It's why I could tell and many other people probably could tell when the Fed started tightening uh, and unwinding its balance sheet, we could tell that it would not uh, work. That uh, once you start down this path uh, of money printing and monetizing debt, you can never, uh, well, you can get out of it, but at, it's a, at, at huge cost to the system, to society. Uh, you actually uh, have to destroy the system itself. So let's go here to page 48 where they talk about the effects of this uh, policy. Uh, month, and I'm quoting all this from the book, by the way, month after month, year after year, new issues went on. Sound familiar? Mr. Draghi, <laughs> uh, Mr. Bernanke, Miss Yellen, uh, Mr. Pow as well, who's probably going to start doing QE again. Meanwhile, everything possible was done to keep up the value of paper. The city authorities of Metz took a solemn oath that the Asinats should bear the same price, whether in paper or specie, and whether in buying or selling, and various other official bodies throughout the nation followed their example. So price controls, um, yeah, basically. In obedience to those who believed with the market women of Paris, as stated in their famous petitions, that laws should be passed making paper money as good as gold. Legal tender laws, right? Uh, Couton, in August 7, 1793, had proposed and carried a law punishing any person who should sell asinats at less than their nominal value with imprisonment for 20 years in chains, and later carried a law making investments in foreign countries by Frenchmen punishable with death. Well, we haven't seen that yet uh, these days, but we, we look at uh, the advent of cryptocurrencies and how the uh, establishment is worried about that, how they want to regulate it or sometimes even like uh, uh, make it illegal, right? But to the surprise of the great majority of the French people, the value of the Essenats was found after the monetary spasms of fear had passed not to have been permanently increased by these measures. On the contrary, this fiat paper persisted in obeying the natural laws of finance. And as new issues increased, their value decreased, supply and demand, right? Nor did the most lavish aid of nature avail. The paper money of the nation seemed to possess a magic power to transmutate prosperity into adversity and plenty into famine. The year 1794 was exceptionally fruitful, and yet with the autumn came scarcity of provisions, and with the winter came distress. The reason is perfectly simple. The sequences in that whole history are absolutely logical. First, the assembly had inflated the currency, and raise prices enormously. So yeah, when you inflate the currency, prices uh, go up because that currency goes down in value. And that's why we're having a rising cost of living nowadays as well, despite all the money they're printing, right? Next, it had been, next, it had been forced to establish an arbitrary maximum for price of, for produce, but this price large as it seemed, soon fell below the real value of produce. Many of the farmers therefore raised less produce or refrained from bringing what they had to market. But as is usual in such a case, the trouble was ascribed to everything rather than the real cause. And the most severe measures were established in all parts of the country to force farmers to bring produce to markets, millers to grind and shopkeepers to sell it. The issues of paper money continued. Uh, so there you go. Um, when you read uh, or watch the mainstream media, mainstream economists, uh, 
they talk about rising prices as, as if it was something like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> supernatural, right? Oh, prices are rising. Uh, they never uh, look at the fact that uh, it's because of the inflation. And what the, what is inflation? Well, inflation of the money supply, uh, the increase in debt, uh, deficits, uh, ever-increasing deficits that result into debt, uh, money printing by the central banks, uh, credit creation by by the private banks at you know who get money for free from the central banks they never talk about that you know the supply of currency usually it, it follows the law of supply and demand right it makes uh, the currency worth less so it was the same thing back then so it it goes to say the issues of paper money continued. Toward the end of 1794, 7,000 millions in assignats were in circulation. By the end of 1795, the circulation was increased to 10,000 millions. At the end of July, to 14,000 millions. And the value of 100 francs in paper fell steadily. First to 4 francs in gold, then to 3, then to 2, then to 1 half. But curiously enough, while this depreciation was rapidly going on as at various other periods when depreciation was rapid there came an apparent revival of business the the hopes of uh, many were revived by the fact that in spite of the decline of paper there was an exceedingly brisk trade in all kinds of permanent property uh well it's the flight to a uh, tangible goods right so there you go um the more they have to keep doing this, uh, the worse it's going to get. Uh, and uh, I mean, this is a great little book for you to, to learn uh, what's eventually going to happen. Well, eventually uh, it will all implode and uh, a lot of people will get hurt. People are getting hurt already, the general public. Uh, that's why there's so much inequality right now because uh, the speculators, the hedge fund managers, the people close to the people who run the system, uh, they have ways to protect themselves. They get out of this paper very quickly into other uh, tangibles. Uh, the general public can't do that. And that's why uh, people are, you know, uh, life is getting tougher and tougher for the general public. The cost of living it keeps rising. Uh, and, and it's all because of the inflation of the currency, even though we are told by central bankers that uh, low inflation is a problem, that we need to keep it at 2%, right? So I highly recommend this book um, for those of you who haven't read it. I'm sure uh, many of you have read it by now because I've uh, recommended it many times. But I think it's, uh, yeah, it's paramount that you read this because... We are uh, in the most gigantic experiment now in fiat uh, money or fiat currency or paper money. Uh, we've left the French in the dust, <laughs> uh, the, you know, the 1790s uh, French society. Anyway, let's look at where the markets are. It, it's quarter past eight. Yes, yesterday was not a good day for the precious metals. Uh, well, mostly in the afternoon. Uh, after the U.S. came in, that's when it started going down. Uh, I think the low was 1500 in gold. It had gotten up to 1535. But uh, yeah, the higher uh, the gold price goes or the lower paper currencies uh, uh, dive, uh, the more, you know, it's going to get crazy out there. So uh, for those of you who hold the precious metals, uh, it, for the long haul, uh, yeah, you just keep you need to keep a hold of it. That's why they call it a bull market. You need to keep a hold of the bull. Um, and uh, yeah, trading is a different story, of course. Uh, so we have re rebounded a little bit this morning. We're at fifteen oh eight on gold, up four and a half dollars. Range has been fifteen oh two eighty four to fifteen eleven. Silver is still uh, below eighteen right now. It's up two cents at seventeen ninety two. Uh, yeah, silver uh, is even more volatile uh, than gold in, in a bull market. So that's why you get these huge uh, variations. Uh, 
you can get these huge variations up or down. So the high overnight has been 1806, the low 1786. Uh, yeah, stock market uh, did well yesterday. Some comments from Trump about trade, um, more political um, <laughs> stuff going on. Apparently that was the reason why markets rallied. This morning, the Dow is down 27 at 26,945. S&P still below 3,000, down four at 2980. NASDAQ 100 down 21, a quarter of a percent at 77.88. We saw the dollar rise yesterday as well. Um, cable right now is unchanged though, 123.56. Uh, the Euro uh, is at one dollar uh, and nine cents and a half unchanged dollar is down slightly against the u1 at 107.66.1 of a percent dollar u1 is unchanged 712 wti crude is at 56.28 down uh, 0.4 of a percent brent crude is down uh, 0.4 as well at 61.38 uh, yields rallied yesterday. 10-year yield uh, went up to 172, so rallied 8 basis points. So still a lot of volatility in the bond market. Today it's down uh, about 3 basis points at 170. The 2 years at uh, 167, so only uh, 3 basis points differential there. If you enjoyed this video, uh, make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Steemit, and on DTube. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.